Hi there, this is Bethany Barnard, Independent Demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And welcome to another week of 12 Weeks to a Wild Christmas with Bethany and Leela. This is actually our fifth project, so we've been doing this for five weeks now. That means we have seven more weeks left. And that also indicates that there's only eight weeks till Christmas. Christmas is just eight weeks away. So we're hoping that our projects that we're sharing with you are helping you to get ready for the holidays. We have had assortments of uh, table settings and countdown calendars and little gifts that you can give to other people and stocking stuffers. And so along the way, we're hoping that you will find something that's useful to you for decorating or for gift giving. And we'll have some pretty cards coming up as well. So today I'm excited about this project because we're using little chocolate nuggets and together with the bundle Alphabest, which comes with a coordinating punch to punch out the letters, you can personalize these, which how great is that? This one, this little one that's just three nuggets across, I've gold embossed Joy. So I think this would be just a fun thing to even carry around with you and be able to give people that you come across during the day. And you know, you with only three nuggets, they just whip up so quickly. You can make four of these boxes from one sheet of cardstock. You can actually make four of this one with one sheet of cardstock as well. But this one is four letters. We've put Noel here. So I want you to notice this is three nuggets, four nuggets, and then here's five nuggets, because I want you to see I've got these measurements to where whatever letters you have, the formula is very simple for how to cut and how to score your cardstock. And here's one that says Mary. I'm really excited about that because you could also personalize them with their names. So let me give you an example of that. I've made this one here, and this is a special one because it's it's what I would call a double row. This is a single row, and this is a double row. And I'm gonna give you the easy measurements for both, but I'm getting ready to put together a little basket for a good friend of mine. And so I've got this pretty paper, and inside it says, Mary Kate. So imagine if you put together with your coworkers little chocolate nuggets and had them personalized with their names. Now I could have made that Mary Kate very long, but I opted to do it in the two rows rather than a long one. And so those are things you can think about. But let me show you how easy this project is and the formula is to be able to make them. So I have here, and I did these templates, if you like, in different colors, hoping that it would be easier for you to see. Because I want you to see, this is for three nuggets, four nuggets, and five nuggets. But I wanted you to see that the width is exactly the same for all of them. So that measurement is four and seven eighths across here. Now, for the three nugget box, when you turn it this way, it's four and a quarter inches. To do a four nugget, you're just gonna add an inch. So this one is four and a quarter across. This one is five and a quarter. Let me see, I gotta line these up right. Okay, so this one is five and a quarter. It would go this way. Four and a quarter, five and a quarter. And then of course for five nuggets it would be six and a quarter. And if you were doing seven nuggets, right? It would be seven and a quarter. You got it, right? So I've done this little, if you want to take a little snap of this here, you can see that the one measurement is four and seven eighths. And then it starts at four and a quarter for three nuggets. And you could, if you had just a two letter initial or something, you could make it three and a quarter and that would be for two nuggets. And the scoring is exactly the same on all of these, you score in the same place. And so I wanna show you that we're gonna make a three nugget box first. And so I've got some pieces here. So a three nugget box is four and seven eighths by five and a quarter. So that's what the size of this is. And as I always do, I did score it in advance so that I could see it better when I'm doing it on the video but I want you to see how easy this is. 
It starts with a 5 8 inch measurement. And you're going to do that all the way around every single size. No matter what size your box is going to be in the end, you're going to score at 5 8 all the way around. The next score you're going to do is 2 and 1 8 and this is regardless, as long as you have your four and seven eighths up on this side. So in other words, you're always gonna have it in this way and it's gonna get longer this way. So after you've done the perimeter or all four sides at five eighths, then your next one's gonna be at two and one eighth and then at two and three quarters. And that's true for all those different sizes for your single nugget box row. I will show you after I make this one how to do a double box row and it's the same thing, a different measurement, but it stay, all the scoring stays the same throughout. Now I've also, it's a good idea to decorate these with designer series paper first. So I kind of wanted to let you know what the sizes of these are. Now what I do, since these are all scored at five eighths, I cut these at half an inch and I just cut a 12 inch by half an inch and I just cut it up as needed for their measurements. Now, if you want to be exact, the sides, and this is for a, a three nugget box, the front would be two and seven eighths. So that would go here and you would need two of those and we're gonna put these on. And then these little small ones are just one and three eighths. And the big rectangular one measures two and seven eighths by one and one quarter. But that's an easy thing for you to do when you go to decorate your paper. So I'm gonna put those things on first here. And I'm using this beautiful textured chic DSP, and I don't know if you've noticed that, but it's got all this beautiful gold. I hate sometimes to actually cover up this beautiful gold that's in the paper, but on the other side of this paper, I don't know if you've noticed that, but there's something seasonal. This one has snowflakes, but there's something seasonal on every one, like all four seasons show up on the other side. So this is a great, this is in the annual catalog and it's a great DSP for year round use. Okay, so here are the sides. So I'm gonna put them here. And I just am loving these boxes. I'm thinking that, you know, for each of my children and their stockings, I can just do their name. But then some of them are going to be <laughs> sad that their name is long, like Jonathan, compared with, uh, I think all my kids maybe have long names, so maybe it'll be okay. They'll be all right. They're grown up now, and they can handle somebody's getting a little bit more chocolate than them. I can make up for it in other ways. Anyway, I'm babbling here, but uh, yeah, you can, I just love the idea of being able to personalize it or you could, you know, do their play setting that way or just however. You could always make them all the same size and just if their name is shorter, just add nuggets with little paper around it and decorations you don't have to worry about. Um, yeah, you could spell their name and have something else making up those extras. All right, so here's our box. So you can see I'm leaving all of this empty. So this is gonna be the bottom. So you're gonna have your main top piece and then the two long pieces on the side um, I'm sorry, on the front and the back and two on the side. Okay, and then we're gonna do some cutting as always with boxes. And we're gonna start with this middle here and we are going to cut up to that first score mark, which remember these are at five eighths. We're gonna do both middles and we are gonna miter them. Okay. 
them off. Okay. And then when we come up here, we're only going to miter the inside of it and not the side that will be showing. So this is going to actually be a side to the box. So you want to make that nice and straight and you're not going to want to miter it. Again, these, so it's just the small squares that are mitered. And we're gonna do that in all four corners. And then here we go here. And then the next thing we wanna do before we fold our box up is we are going to do a little notch so you can see here so that you know where to put your thumb and pull up the lid so since this has the DSP on this side we know what the front is so I'm just going to take our little punch here and I just eyeball it come up about half I come up halfway between these two again just eyeballing it and I do about half the punch just punch that out and we've got a little notch now we can put the box together. And so I'm gonna use my bone folder to burnish all the folds. Let's see if I can see my, here it is. Okay, all right. So I'm just gonna, when you're making a box, you always want these nice crisp edges. Remember this little box that I'm making for you, which I, you know, you could do joy, you could do, I was trying to think of what is some other three letter words. You could do somebody's, you could do everybody's initials. Then you wouldn't have to worry about how many chocolates because hopefully, <laughs> I know that's not always the case, but three initials. What else could you do for, you know, put that in the comments if you come up with some other ideas. I've, I've thought of elf, but I don't know that, I can see that with a double row, you know. Um, I had a thought about something with an elf. But you're gonna just see how quickly this all comes together. So you're gonna put the glue on all these. You're gonna put it on, you're gonna fold the two bottoms. So these are the bottoms because there's no DSP here. And this middle tab is always part of the box. So I'm gonna put glue on these two tabs here. And then we're just gonna bring them up so that they fold into the inside of the box. And you know I love me some liquid glue because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and time while you're bringing these all together. The beauty of going around the entire box and measuring at the same point is that that, would, that means that all your sides, even if you've cut your paper a little bit off, all your sides are going to be the same and they should meet and be flush while you pull that together. Okay, now we're going to do the other side. So we're going to put some glue here and some glue here. My husband's out right now and I think he's going to come in while I'm still filming. So if you hear that door... I'm just gonna apologize in advance. I like to sometimes bend this all the way back so that I can really get in here and match these sides up. There we go. All right. So now we have two tabs left here. These are part of our top. So we're gonna put them together like this. And you can see I don't use a lot of glue to, but it just really holds so well. I, I do think about sometimes using an easier adhesive for these films to have it go quick more quickly. But sometimes if you get that stuck down in the wrong place, you can make a mess of things. Not that you can, you know, you can make a mess with any adhesive. <laughs> Ask me how I know, because I have made a mess with every adhesive that we offer. But I had trouble with this 
liquid glue when I first started using it. So there is a little bit of a learning curve, but I think it's worth getting through that. It's economical glue, but it really, really holds so well. So here's our box. So you can see that it shuts up like this. We have our little notch. And you're gonna see that I've got three nuggets here that will fit in here beautifully. But we don't want them in there just like that. We're gonna decorate them. So I have these strips here that are just some more DSP. We only need three of them. And I cut, again, I just cut a long one inch, because you only need one inch by three inches per chocolate. So it, I do a 12 inch strip, which is why I had this fourth one here, and then I cut it into inch, sections of three inches. And so it goes very quickly as I'm cutting up, um, as I'm cutting up the strips to do the chocolate. Now I only put adhesive on one end. I take the end that doesn't have the adhesive, I put it on the back of the chocolate, the flat part, and then I just wrap this around and close it. And as I'm looking around my table space here, I'm realizing that I left at the other end of the table some cardstock that we're gonna use to stamp these out so I might have to disappear I hope you'll bear with me but it's really literally on this table but at the other end so shouldn't take me too long and so I'm just going to repeat that if you want you can take the name of the chocolate put it right underneath it wrap it around you'd be surprised how many chocolates are an inch square or an inch um you know, that you can work this with. So there, just wraps up so quickly. Haha, <laughs> at the end of the film, do I say that's a wrap? <laughs> okay, it's tired, it's tired. I'm tired, cause it's late. But I do wanna get this in so that it can be released on time, which is noon on Saturdays. If you look for it and wonder, that's when I release these videos is uh, every Saturday at noon, assuming that the schedule works the way it's supposed to. So I'm gonna put these in the box and now I'm just gonna go quickly so that I can show you how to use the alphabet and the punch. And I have these all set up right here, but to stamp on them, I think I have my strip of paper down here. So I'm back, here we are, and this is, I want to give you a tip on using this alphabet set. If you cut a thin strip, it doesn't even have to be, this is about an inch and a quarter, and it really, you know, an inch would be fine, and sometimes I have these left over just from different projects, but when you go to stamp, and I'm going to stamp the, they all have a little, there's like, one, two, three, four, six different borders you can choose from to stamp your letters in. I've just kind of chosen a pretty plain one here, and I'm gonna match this green on the nuggets. And so instead of stamping this way, we're gonna stamp horizontal. So we only need three, but I'm gonna give you a tip here too. I always stamp at least one extra. And in this case, let's go ahead and do some, first of all, I might be making more later on and they're already stamped. But the main reason I do this is because if I make a mistake with one of the letters, then I can just go to another square. And the reason I do them horizontal, you'll see, but that's the best way to use the punch and not have to keep cutting away at the paper for it to fit into the punch. So I have already set up here J. Now I can turn it this way and at least see it the way I usually see letters. So we have J, O, and Y. Oh, that's what I was thinking of. You could do a double 
row of three and have it be elf joy. I thought that would be kind of cute. We're big elf fans. So see how I can now come in and keep going like this? Whereas if I had stamped them upright, I can only go this far and then I would have to cut to keep going. So that's why my recommendation is to stamp these horizontally. So I did that and then I didn't punch them out, did I? So why? And look, at if you do, if you do stamp extras, you don't make a mistake. That's another rule I've found. If I don't stamp any extra, I am bound to make several mistakes. Okay, and then I find the best thing to use is just our little glue dots. And one of the things I do is I put right over the J, or the J right over a glue dot. And then I put, ooh, there was one there. Ooh, the O there. And I just fill these glue dots up with however long my word is. And then I tear it off right after that word, right? Now, obviously that's, it doesn't matter. I can mix them around on there, but just to make sure I have all the letters, I'm gonna spell it the way you're supposed to. So I've got J, O, and Y. So just remember that DSP is three inches by one inch. And then you can spell out whatever word we can shut it. And then now I have earlier, I went ahead and I stamped Merry Christmas. These smaller boxes have to take smaller greetings, but I have some other ones here that I can show you that I've used. So I'm just taking these glue dots here. They can be hard to see. Okay. And then I'm gonna just put it all about there. And then I punched out, not punched, because it's a die. Because this paper has the little snowflakes, I just took this from Celebrate Tags that's in our annual catalog. And I am going to, hmm, how am I gonna put this on? I do have dimensionals here, but I think they'll show. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this with a glue dot as well. And then I do have a pretty, embellishment that I'm going to put in the center of this. So I'm going to put that there. And then I just love, these are so pretty. I don't know if it's picking up on the video, but they're just really iridescent and they're called um, iridescent rhinestones. How appropriate is that? And I am going to take, yep, I'm going to take one of these nice big ones. And I'm gonna put it right in the center of the snowflake. And how cheerful is that, right? And you can just give that to people. Now we could, I did have ribbon here to put on, on this. I should have thought about that before I did it. Do I wanna still do that? Yeah, let's see if I can pull this up. I'm gonna put that on after I tie a little bow around it here. I do like ribbon, I like bows, I like fancy. I just like for people to feel like they're special and they've got something a little glittery. I love this ribbon. This is our, um, what's it called? White, well, it's, it is white, <laughs> glittered organdy ribbon. But I think it just is perfect for like snow and those, and it goes so well with the iridescent, gems because it's also got that glitter. I hope it's showing up a little bit on the video. Do our little bow here. Again, you know, I do feel like some ribbons tie better than others. And I feel like this is one of those ribbons that really ties up pretty easily. So we'll do that. I'll just trim that edge a little bit. go and then now where am I gonna put this I think I can fit that so that it kind of the bow kind of goes between the snowflake things but I still want to be able to see 
Merry Christmas, don't I? As I said, that's one of the things with these smaller block boxes is you have less opportunity to embellish them. But I have managed to do it anyway. I think I'm gonna stick these underneath where the ribbon goes. There we go. Now, isn't that pretty and cute? I love that. And you can use the ribbon or not use the ribbon. You can have your bow not quite as big as I've made the bow. But it's just such a little cute token. So if you are still with me, and hopefully you did understand what I was saying about just adding that dimension one more inch if you wanted this to be a four letter or a five letter word or six and so on. But the same thing applies for these double row ones. So here's the one that I made earlier and it had this on and I gave you a little peek what it says for my friend. I wonder if she's going to watch this video. I'll be very surprised, but if the person who knows this is sees it on here, she better let me know. I won't mind if she sees it, but I am curious if she ever watches my videos. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I've got this one all tied up and now I'm going to take you through how to do this one and I just want you to understand and know that the principle is exactly the same. <clears throat> Only this time your your number is seven and five eighths. This one is going to be two rows of four again and it's seven and five eighths by five and one quarter. The seven and five eighths is what stays the same for a double row. If you want, if you wanted to only have a double row of three, such as Elf Joy, then that would be four and a quarter, seven and five eighths by four and a quarter. If you wanted it to be five, uh, this one is four. Yeah, if you wanted it to be five, then it would be seven and five eighths by six and a quarter. I hope that's making sense for you. But again, um, let me write on here double row. And then you can take a snapshot of it and you'll know that this measurement is what stays the same. And then when you come to score it, again, you're going to do the same thing of five eighths of an inch all the way around. And I am going to do this so you'll see. And then you're going to do it at three and a half and four and one eighth. No matter how many letters, your double row is always scored five eighths of an inch all the way around. And then with that seven and five eighths at the top, perpendicular to whatever you're scoring with, and you'll always score after scoring five eighths all the way around, you'll always score it three and one half and four and one eighth. So let me show you how that goes. So here's my scoreboard. So I have the seven and five eighths. You'll see, well maybe, whoops, hope you'll see. Seven and five eighths ends right there. We're gonna do the five eighths all the way around. And that's so that by doing it here, instead of coming here and doing it at seven, that's the part about how if you're just even off a 16th of an inch or whatever, you're gonna know your sides are always the same by turning it and doing five eighths on all four sides. Then you take that consistent measure of seven and five eighths, you put that at the top of your scoreboard, or if you have a trimmer where you score, you're gonna have the seven and five eighths at the top and then you'll be scoring perpendicular and that will be at three and a half and four and one eighth. Always true no matter how many double letters you're going to do. And then we're going to just do this one up really quickly. Hope you're still with me and you can see what I've decided to do to decorate this one. I'm excited to get this together and I'm excited about all the little gifts I'm going to already have here and put aside for treats for family and friends. And I really lucked out, or my daughter did. Well, it's really me because it's my money, but I sent my daughter up to the store to buy some nuggets for this video because I've already... <laughs> 
gone through two bag, two one really big bag, and they have these new ones out that are truffles that are in a really pretty silvery blue color. I really like it. And I intend to use those as well. But when she was there, the ones in the silver wrap, she found, and they're all, I checked them, they're, the dates are still, late, you know, they're good till next year, according to the dates on the package. But she said there were three bags, only three bags. I don't know if they're getting ready to decorate them for holiday or whatever. But they were like half price. So being my daughter and being smart, she bought all of them. <laughs> I was so excited when she told me. So yes, I will continue to be making these and using those up. Okay, so you see I'm doing the same, it's it's the same steps as with the one that we just finished that was a little bit smaller. This is just a double row. So I may even have lost you by now and I would understand that because it's exactly the same steps. I'm gonna fold these in unless you only zoomed ahead to be able to see how to do the double rows and you haven't looked at this part yet, I suppose. Okay, so again, these, by the way, you can just decide which is the top and which is the bottom because the measurements are even on both sides. So I have here, I am gonna use this paper that's from Santa's, I never can remember what this is called, Santa's something. Anyway, it says fa la 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 all across the paper, which is, might be hard to see on the video, but I'm gonna actually decorate this the same because it's fa la 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 here. I might use a different ribbon. I'm gonna use a ribbon from this suite. Why can't I think of what it's called? Santa's something. And um, put the train on it, but I'm doing something different on the inside. You might recall that the other box has my friend's name on it but I had a different idea for this one. My daughter says it's very popular. I don't ever seem to know what's popular out there, but I was glad to hear that she says this is really out there now. This fa la la fa la la la, -la evidently is a, I don't know, she was telling me that at Target they had a sign or something that you could get that said fa la la la. She wanted me to get it just to present this <laughs> project today. It's like, um, no, I don't really use signs when I'm stamping and showing these projects. Now, one thing to consider with your DSP, it doesn't matter because the size is going to be the same. And again, I cut this long strip at half an inch because at five eighths of an inch, that means you're getting an eighth of an inch leeway. So I find it easy just to remember that half an inch. But these are words, so I'm making sure that when this is a top, that you can read them all, that they're not upside down. So you do want to think about that, whether it's words or like just a design that you don't want upside down on the lid. So you want to think about that with your DSP. And if you don't want to worry about that, just get a DSP that has a pattern that doesn't matter which direction. And there's a lot of those out there. Okay, see, so here's fa la 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 la. This is gonna be the opening side, so I wanna make sure that the words are going in the right direction. Here we go. And then, so this one, and this is where I never know, do I keep this pattern going? but I tend to always do it to where it's gonna be right side up on the side. I don't know which, if it matters that much. I'll tell you what, if I made a mistake, I'd still give it to somebody and doubt that they would ever notice. Okay, so here we go. La 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 la. You can see I'm making a mess here with the glue because I'm going fast and it's because I flipped it over and I dropped it on here. But I have this trusty eraser that will get this glue all up, you know, at the end of the project. And so you won't, it won't matter to you right now. Okay, so this is our bottom. Oh, I, I still have time, but I do want to make sure that once you put the DSP on, the next step really should be to make this notch. It's gonna be hard to do a notch if you've already formed your box. So halfway on either side, halfway up my punch, 
just eyeballing it, punch, and then we've got our notch. And now we can put the box together. I just love that, that, that these measurements are so consistent and it's so easy to figure out how to do your boxes for whatever it is you'd like to spell out. Of course, you know, you can put nuggets in a box and you don't have to spell out anything. You can just decorate them with beautiful DSP and that's nice too. But I just love the idea of personalizing little gifts at Christmas. So that's why I wanted to show you that. And you know, really, once you learn how to do this, you could use it year round and say things like, I actually have one down at the other end of the table. I've done a really big one where I made a bottom and a top and I stamped out Merry Christmas. I actually used those truffle chocolates that I told you were out in that pretty silvery blue paper. And I also used that new DSP. I don't know if you know this, but Stampin' Up! is releasing a new suite called Fitting Florets. So I made the box with that DSP from that suite that will be available November 1st. Which is, whoa, right around the corner. Tomorrow is the 29th. So that means, what, Tuesday is November 1st. It is coming quick, guys. Okay, so I, and I have done, I don't know if anybody noticed, uh, probably not, but in my other box, I even lined DSP on the inside here. So, oh, I did want to tell you, oh, I'm glad I'm jabbering because it just made me remember another idea that can be great with these nuggets and with their name. And, you know, as I said, you could do anything. Congratulations, best wishes. Happy birthday. That's what's great about having that whole alphabet. But here's what I wanted to tell you is, look at the size of this. You could put the nuggets in here and you could attach a gift card here at the top too. What a great way to give a gift card, you know, in one of these double rows. So I have already, so I told you that the paper here all says fa la la. Fa la 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 fa la la. Let's see how many. It's mostly all la la la. I guess every once in a while in there there's a fa. So that's what I've done here. Fa la. This is what my daughter is telling me is out there is a lot of fa la la la. And that's a pretty festive. Uh, it, I don't know, makes me think of a festive sort of, whoops, there we go. So they open it up and it says fa la la la. But see how you could put a gift card right in there? Now what I've done in advance already, again from this suite, actually it's part of that DSP, and the dies cut the train out. If the stamp set cup comes with the train, but the dies cut out the stamp, uh, the DSP too. I'm going to put this up on dimensionals. And this will be this will be fun for some of my grandkids who are kind of train crazy. Also, I give out little gifts. We have a progressive dinner before Christmas, about a week before Christmas every year, and I always do a little sort of Santa run for everybody that's there. I'm just peeling off all these di um, dimensional backings here. And so these would be like little cute, inexpensive gifts because it's all people I buy gifts for on Christmas day anyway, but I just like to make the progressive dinner just that little bit more fun. Everybody loves to get a little present, right? So I think I'm gonna put his train in the same place here, okay? And so you remember it says fa-la-la-la -la -la in there. And instead of this ribbon, 
also as part of that suite, and you know, again, that really iridescent, can you tell I like sparkly? <laughs> so I decided I'm gonna go ahead and make a bow out of this ribbon. And that's how I always measure ribbon. I think you've probably seen me do that. If you've watched my other videos, you've seen me do that and get myself into trouble. <laughs> but it usually works for me, so I haven't changed my ways yet. Anyway, put the bow on. Then here we go. So how lovely is this? Make your, you want to make your uh, bow go where you want it to. The, you want the, well, I do anyway. I know where I want my strands and I know where I want my loops. So I'm fussing with it a little bit. This is not as nice as some of those other ribbons I always tell you are so fun and nice to tie. But usually you don't have to put them anywhere where that matters. But look, how cute is that? So this one says, Fala la la. This one has my friend's name. And then I've taken the ribbon off all of these, but you can see I have the two nugget, the sorry, the three nugget, four nugget, five nugget, and then two double nuggets of four. I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been fun to be with you again and to make these up and be ready for my Christmas as well. So thank you for sticking it out with me. Bye.